Let's start with uh, the two most asked questions during this pandemic. Can you hear me okay? Can you see my slide in full screen? It's all great, thank you. Thank you for the confirmation, Scott. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for giving me your time on a Friday evening and your interest on the topic of ThoughtWorks culture. My colleague, Patricia, she couldn't be here today, but what I'm sharing with you today is something that we both very much created together. Her other teammate is Mithila, her awesome XD, and everything that you see visually today is thanks to her brilliance. I wanna start with what can you expect from the talk today? <clears throat> well, if you're someone outside ThoughtWorks, I hope the talk gives you an understanding of ThoughtWorks culture and some of the inner workings. If you're a thought worker who joined remotely during this pandemic, I hope this talk expands your awareness of ThoughtWorks culture. Lastly, if you're a tenured thought worker, this is an opportunity to celebrate our culture together and also prepare for an exciting future. We wanna start with what is culture and creating a common reference point for ourselves. There are 10 things that we wanna share about ThoughtWorks culture 10 things that we are most passionate about. And then we'll talk about why is our culture important and how does it enable us to create extraordinary impact. Lastly, we have some ideas on how to protect, preserve, and positively evolve our culture as we scale our thought leadership. And we have a little surprise for you at the end. It would be wonderful to tell the story together along with the many thought workers on this call. So please jump on to Zoom chat, thought workers, share your favorite part about ThoughtWorks culture, your stories, light up the chat on fire, my friends. We also have these little birdies flying around today, and I'm told they may be bringing some fun surprises along the way. So watch out for the birds. So what is culture? You know, we did some research ourselves, and we think the best way to summarize it is as a set of things, you know, values, beliefs, norms, customs, assumptions. And why are they important? Because they drive behaviors. Behaviors around how we make decisions, how we work together, solve problems, share information, how we improve, et cetera, et cetera. And culture has to be communicated, shared, experienced, so it drives the right behaviors. It's also important to build culture into what we do every day, just like building in quality. That's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about the 10 things across the various elements of culture that we just looked at. 10 things about our culture that we are very passionate about in no particular order. Number one, revolutionizing the IT industry or rev IT as we commonly call it. You know, the fact that most of the modern software engineering concepts have come from ThoughtWorks, I'm sure most of you know it, whether it's automated testing and Selenium back in the day, CI, CD and cruise control, agile pioneers, microservices, and most recently data mesh. There are a few important things on how these are made possible within ThoughtWorks. All of these concepts that we have brought onto the industry, they all have come from actual work we have done. It's not out of research projects or anything like that. Thought workers are always looking to boldly push the boundaries of software development, creating patterns out of those and bringing out to the industry. And ThoughtWorks encourages everyone to go out and share their learnings, be it within ThoughtWorks or in the industry, in the form of open source contributions, in the form of books, you know, sharing our best practices and learnings because we want to better the overall industry and how software is getting developed. Anyone and everyone is welcome to write books at ThoughtWorks, and they actually do. The support and encouragement that ThoughtWorks provides for people to write books is amazing. The fact that book authors can spend time with Martin Fowler and Neil Ford and take their help to write books and articles is amazing. And that helps create more luminaries like them. Like our CTO, Rebecca Parsons says, even when we were small, we believe we could and did revolutionize the IT industry. The journey continues and we still know there's a better way. Number two, hiring. You know, from literally day one, 
aptitude, attitude, and integrity has been our hiring philosophy. And that's what we were looking for in the candidates. No assholes was a more crude one, but still on point. We hire for what we feel we cannot teach. Does this make us the second most difficult company to be hired into? Well, according to Glassdoor and Forbes, it is. Thoughtworks is a relatively flat organization compared to the rest of the industry. It's, it's participative, it's open, transparent, and everyone has an equal voice. It was important for us to reflect that in the hiring process. So our hiring process is truly 360 degree. So various roles who are going to work with that person are actually involved, bought into the candidate and ultimately invest in making that person successful at ThoughtWorks. Having worked globally at ThoughtWorks, one of the things that I'm amazed about ThoughtWorks is that from starting up in Chicago and now expanding to 48 offices across 17 countries, how we have managed to maintain the same high bar for talent consistently. It is so easy to work with thought workers globally because a thought worker is a thought worker is a thought worker, whether it's India, China, Brazil, or North America. Nine years ago, when I joined ThoughtWorks, I knew very little about the company. But the interview process that I went through, it was a long process, interesting discussions. You know, People I met were very different and opinionated. The office general manager was the last one to meet me. He showed up in shorts and round neck t-shirt with a plate of food in his hands. And the first thing he told me was, well, what do you think? We are a little weird company, aren't we? You know, all this got me very curious about ThoughtWorks and I felt so happy clearing that tough interview process and getting an offer. So I decided to take the plunge and find out for myself what this ThoughtWorks is all about. And that's a story I've heard from many of my colleagues. Number three, collaboration and co-creation. This is my personal favorite when it comes to our ways of working at ThoughtWorks. Pairing is not just limited to developers. In our software development teams, there is cross-functional pairing between product and design and developers and QAs. And in general, collaborating and co-creating is simply how we all work at ThoughtWorks. And we value high-performing teams over heroic individuals. I've been part of countless number of sessions at ThoughtWorks where someone brings a complex problem to the group. A set of thought workers who have probably never worked together, the group starts collaborating, building on each other's ideas. Someone voluntarily opens a live Google Doc and everything starts to take shape. And suddenly, boom, you have a wonderful solution in front of you in just a couple of hours. The fact that we have Software Dev Forum where Martin Fowler, and a grad dev who joined yesterday, the fact that they both can exchange ideas and challenge each other as colleagues, that is amazing. That also shows inclusivity in practice. You know, in fact, um, the software dev forum is one thing that our alumni ask for access to. It is such a rich body of knowledge and a great example of collaboration and co-creation. In most of the industry, I've seen when it comes to offshore and nearshore countries, there's a big tendency to throw something over the wall and simply look to get a task done. At ThoughtWorks, there is true collaboration and solving problems together, regardless of which country you are in. And you know, sometimes it does not work because people are very strongly opinionated. I think what makes it work is mutual respect, giving everyone an equal voice and truly accepting diverse thinking which is why I think it works more than 90% of the time. All right, the birds are here. It looks like they want to play a little game with you all. Many truths and a lie about ThoughtWorks. Ready? There you go, many truths and a lie about ThoughtWorks. Spot the lie. We'll give you guys a few seconds. All right, let's close voting in three, two, one, and done. Can we see the results? Ooh, interesting. Wow, I mean, most of you guys got it right. Now option C is the lie. We did not adopt Agile from get-go. We adopted Agile when we had a huge project that had almost made no progress. Everything else is actually true about ThoughtWorks. 
Thank you. There comes our backup slide. Let's move on. <clears throat> Number four, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, in 2010, our CEO back then, Trevor, on the topic of diversity, asking us to be very serious about it, he mandated our global leadership to hire 50% women and underrepresented gender minorities as a part of our graduate intake program, ThoughtWorks University. It sounded impossible to everyone back then, but with focus and passion, we did it. And every single time since then, we have come a long way in DEI in the last 11 years. How useful is focusing on diversity if you are not creating an inclusive workplace for the diverse people we are bringing in or treating them with equity and equality, which is where for me, ThoughtWorks approach and focus on diversity, equity and inclusivity shines for me. We focus on four areas as a holistic approach. Number one, finding and nurturing diverse talent regardless of age, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender, religion, disability, background or identity. I am particularly proud of the work we have done globally in championing women in tech. Number two, creating a sense of inclusion and belonging so they could be themselves at work and bring out their best. Awareness on topics such as unconscious bias and microaggressions, I think they go a long way in achieving this. Number three, advancement and opportunities. A great example here is our leadership development programs have had more than 50% women for the last 10 years. Number four, retention and people policies. Our this week's October pay surprise and the focus on pay parity analysis with respect to DEI and the fact that we are supporting gender transition and adoption leaves, to me, those are great examples of this. You know, we have won multiple DEI awards. Winning Anita Borg Award in North America several times is a great example, but I think there's something else that's more important than those awards. James Great, our North America Head of Diversity, he says it very well. I quote him, diverse organizations are great, but organizations that foster a sense of dignity and belonging are next level. At ThoughtWorks, we are very proud of operating at the next level, and the journey is one of continuous improvement. Think about what does the next level mean to you and tell us on the chat. Number five, um, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. <clears throat> Dan Pink in his book, Drive, he so eloquently talks about autonomy, mastery, and purpose as three elements of intrinsic motivation as opposed to extrinsic motivation using carrots and sticks. When his book came out in 2009, we thought it so neatly describes what we have been doing since early 90s. Tech workers are knowledge workers. And so for them to be successful, you gotta give them autonomy, mastery, and purpose. We truly function as autonomous teams and push the decisions to those who are closest to the decision and in the best possible position to take those decisions. We invest a lot in people's skill development and help them master their craft. You know, while ThoughtWorks makes a lot of investments to help people master their craft, I think the biggest part is having a learning environment within the company and the strong desire to constantly push for software excellence. That combination, I think is very powerful. Whether it's client work or internal initiatives, asking why and multiple times and multiple levels of why is simply how we all operate. And not just for the heck of it, but really from a place of genuine curiosity and a strong desire to deeply understand the impact of our work first and contribute to something larger than us. Asking why is a big part of our culture. So I personally find it really cool that our mission statement and purpose is actually called ThoughtWorks Why. Number six, learning and capability building. <laughs> There is this well-known um, research-based L&D model, a well-known philosophy of how humans learn. It's called 70-20-10. 70 percent of learning on the job through practice, trying something and failing, and then trying again. 20 percent through social learning, coaching, mentoring, learning from watching others. And only 10 percent from formal learning. Typically, that's what people focus on. Training is important, but not the end-all be-all. 
Everything we do on capability development, it fully resembles that model. Take ThoughtWorks University, for instance, which is our global program for entry-level grads. It has blends of all three, coaching, pairing, classroom sessions, project simulation, on the, law, on the job learning, all of that. And so do the other programs, you know, be it architecture residency, different boot camps, data university, they all follow a similar model. At ThoughtWorks, there are no boundaries around who you can reach out to for help. And people do that all the time and genuinely help each other. Asking for help is not a bad thing at all. In fact, it's the opposite. It's totally encouraged. It's collective learning. It comes from the belief that when we help others grow, we grow ourselves. We call it cultivation. When we talk about learning and capability building, it's not just the developers or the techies, it's literally everyone in the organization at all levels with a learning mindset. I went through a couple of learning programs this year that ThoughtWorks sponsored for me. I got immense value out of it. You know, topics that I thought I had mastered, I learned so many new things. And with a desire to help our leaders drive immense value for our clients and provide excellent client services, we even have a program called ECS, specifically designed for our client leaders. So it's quite literally learning at all levels. It's trivia time. Let's see what the birds got this time. It looks like something around ThoughtWorks slogans. There you go. <clears throat> Which of these have never been a tagline or marketing slogan for ThoughtWorks? Let's close the voting. Three, two, one, and let's close it. <clears throat> Ooh, very interesting. Quite a mixed response. Actually, none of the above. All of these, believe it or not, they have been a slogan at some point or the other, including college with money. Our current branding and tagline is, of course, delivering extraordinary impact to the Skip this. <clears throat> number seven, leadership. There are a number of things that come to my mind about leadership culture at ThoughtWorks. Firstly, servant leadership mentality, it's not just an agile teams. It is something that is prevalent across the organization along with a reasonably flat hierarchy. Transparency is a big part of leadership. Last year, dealing with COVID pay cut is a great example. At the beginning, Nobody knew if there needs to be a pay cut. Our leadership transparently communicated the situation week on week, went through the journey together with all of ThoughtWorks. And in the end, we were one of the very, few, very, very few companies to have zero pay cuts during the pandemic. It's also a big part of how we lead ourselves with our clients. We transparently tell our clients the hard truth about where the product development is and where their ecosystem is. Leaders at ThoughtWorks tend to influence as opposed to instructing. We emphasize authenticity as opposed to authority. And that leadership behavior is so important to enable autonomous teams. I like how our leadership behaviors are so well-defined, making it very accessible for budding leaders. There are seven leadership behaviors that we talk about, some of which I covered, and there's more. For example, thinking big and taking risks is very much encouraged. We don't look at leadership as a certain grade or position. We look at it as an attitude that is built on competencies and skills. And ThoughtWorks encourages everyone to be a leader, to develop leadership ability throughout our careers as we face new challenges and opportunities. You will often see in many of our account teams, people in various roles step up and lead because it's absolutely not about roles and titles and hierarchy. There is a tremendous emphasis on leading by example. Take diversity, for instance. We're not just talking about diversity. Our global leadership is around 50% women. And Chris Murphy, ThoughtWorks North America CEO, he puts it very well. In his own words, and I quote, leaders are role models of ThoughtWorks culture and our cultural values. This means that our purpose, our lenses, 
and our values must be at the heart of everything they do in action as well as in words. Number eight, I think, I think talk of focus on sustainability and social change is best told through a couple of stories. In the rural areas of Chhattisgarh in India, many villages had to travel really long distances and often wait for days just to get basic healthcare. A group of doctors who believed that access to healthcare should not be denied to anyone due to lack of money or discrimination based on religion, sex, and social class, they formed a nonprofit society called JSS to solve the problem for those villages. And they needed a hospital management and information system that can work in an extremely low resource environment. Thought workers teamed up with JSS, spent a lot of time in person at those remote villages, set up servers, installed operating system, built the software and even trained the local staff there. We not only helped solve the problem for those villages, since then we have improved the product, we have made it open source and it's been implemented in more than 400 locations in more than 50 countries. It's called Bhamni. The pre Arts Electronica is the premier global award for technology arts. To be part of one award is huge. To be part of projects that have received two pre arts Electronica Awards in the same year, that is something we had not imagined. The projects that won these awards and many other projects that have won several other awards, they're all incubated in what we call ThoughtWorks Arts, which is a global technology research lab incubating collaborations between ThoughtWorkers and groundbreaking artists investigating the impacts of emerging technologies on industry, culture, and society. We all know ThoughtWorks has revolutionized the modern software engineering space. Now, with what we are doing in the sustainability and green tech space, co-founding the Green Software Foundation, launching the Cloud Carbon Footprint open source tool, creating the responsible tech playbook, it's clear to me that we are on the journey of revolutionizing and guiding the industry in this space. I think a few years from now, not having green tech is going to be socially unacceptable, just like drunken driving is today. At that point, we all can look back and feel proud of the impact we've created as a company. Number nine, challenging status quo. I have seen in most of the software industry, there is a culture of simply doing what the clients are asking you to do, or simply do what your leadership is asking you to do. Almost everyone who come from outside, they talk about how it's very different at ThoughtWorks. Thought workers challenge your clients like crazy. It comes from the desire to constantly improve how we develop software, the desire to ensure that we are focused on solving the right problems and the focus on creating business value for our clients, as opposed to just doing a project. Many of our clients find it very uncomfortable at first, and then they start seeing the value, and that becomes the very thing they like about ThoughtWorks. And slowly, it spreads in the client organization and changes their culture as well. It's no different within ThoughtWorks. ThoughtWorkers challenge the decisions that our leadership often makes, and how we do things within ThoughtWorks and that actually helps us constantly improve how we run our business. It's not one person or one role who can challenge the status quo. Everyone has an equal voice. And personally for me, when I take an idea to a few thought workers and they challenge me and help me improve the idea, it gives me tremendous confidence that the idea has been vetted by some of the brilliant minds you can find. And number 10, fun at work. <clears throat> you know, when I joined ThoughtWorks back in Bangalore, I saw people roaming around in the office wearing shots, playing carom and chess around the office, battling over video games in the evening, wearing Avengers masks while pair programming and during serious project discussions hanging out at the bar next door almost every evening 
with the MD and the grad who we joined yesterday sitting together and having serious debates about ThoughtWorks business. And I thought, these are the people who revolutionize IT, really? The vibe and the camaraderie in the office was mind blowing. Playing pranks was so common too. My third day in the company, my HR played a prank on me, revising my offer letter and carving out a significant part as a variable pay, HR of all people. And three months later, I paid it forward, playing a prank on my tech lead, teaming up with my client to create a fake escalation and sending my tech lead over to the client's office on April Fool's Day. I became a thought worker that day. I think the main reason why we are able to have so much fun together and deliver extraordinary impact is because we bring our whole human self to work and everyone is able to express their full true self. Marcus Tharp, our global head of recruiting, he puts it very well about thought workers. He says, thought workers have such high IQ, such high EQ and very low ego. And that is why it is so powerful and makes us from good to great. So here we are, the 10 things about ThoughtWorks culture that we covered. When you look at that, if you have to pick one main thing that is missing in that list, what would that be? Think about it. <clears throat> we had a few things, but for us, the one main thing was how we develop software. And the beauty is how we develop software it actually brings together so many different things that we talked about. The idea of a build monitor is based on transparency within a team. We transparently communicate project progress with our clients. Our test-driven development drives feedback and continuous improvement for our own code. Retrospective is how we give feedback to ourselves. Our software development teams, they are diverse teams, they are autonomous and thought workers are polyglots. There is strong collaboration in how we create software, paired programming and product and design and technology working together to create customer value. There's an experimentation mindset throughout our software development. Our software dev teams challenge the status quo at our clients every day. Anything we're doing more than once, we think about automating it. You know, you can go on and on. I've seen for the rest of the industry, agile is mostly about rituals and practices. When I joined ThoughtWorks nine years ago, with almost 15 years of industry experience, I thought I knew everything about software development. But I must say, I was humbled. It's not just with how we develop software, but across our business, you'd see Agile in its true form with all the principles being applied every single day. So why is our culture important? And how does it enable us to create extraordinary impact? <clears throat> I think it's best explained with our business flywheel. And here is a simplified version of it. It starts with hiring brilliant people globally. And for brilliant people, you need to give them a larger purpose, creating a larger impact on the industry and society through our thought leadership. The thought leadership is based on the actual work we do. So we engage those brilliant people and we empower them to solve complex problems for our clients, challenging status quo. And therefore we get rewarded for our premium services and create value for our investors, which we also invest back in our people, grow and nurture talent and thought leaders. And that allows us to be recognized in the industry as a place for diverse thought leaders who are pursuing excellence which in turn helps us hire more brilliant talent and the flywheel picks up momentum. And what's at the center of the flywheel is our culture acting as the fulcrum. <clears throat> Since our culture is that important, how do we protect, preserve and positively evolve our culture as we scale our thought leadership? We think to figure out how we do that in the future, I think it's important to, to look back at our past. ThoughtWorks was founded in 1993. 
our founder founded it as a social experiment to see if it's possible to create the kind of company he wanted to make and last long, which many people told him couldn't be done. The kind of things that people told him couldn't be done, here are some examples. You bring brilliant people together, they cannot collaborate effectively and they will self-destruct. You go international so you can take advantage of people in weaker countries. Culture is secondary. It cannot be a sustainable advantage. Many more things like that. Early thought workers not only proved the social experiment successful and became pioneers of the agile movement, they started doing distributed agile at scale for complex projects and showed to the industry what's possible. Back then, ThoughtWorks set the record for the largest successful distributed agile project. And through our work, we started revolutionizing the industry. The introduction of Selenium revolutionized the testing space. The birth of cruise control brought on continuous integration and combined with continuous delivery later on, it completely changed how software is developed, uh, delivered to production. 2005, we established ThoughtWorks University and sent our global grad recruits to India for six weeks training. As a global first company, it was really important for us that anyone who wasn't willing to travel to a global South country like India for ThoughtWorks University, we didn't think they belonged in the ThoughtWorks family. So we didn't hire them. Around 2009, we started getting very serious about our social impact and formally created our three pillar model around sustainable business, revolutionizing IT and social impact. Our thought leadership continued. Tech Radar came out to the world, our microservices paper and book revolutionized distributed computing and many more. In 2016 onwards, we have won several times the prestigious Anita Borg Award as a top company for women technologists. We then grew together with Apex partners and went public on NASDAQ recently. In 2020, we also expanded our three pillar model to a more holistic five lenses and came out with ThoughtWorks Y. Let's double click on ThoughtWorks Y for a second. Our culture is so strong, it made its way to our mission statement, our purpose right at the center. The five different lenses give us a clear perspective on how we all can contribute to achieving our purpose. Our values form the outer layer, wrapping it all together. I find ThoughtWorks Y very powerful because it acts as a frame of reference for all of us to make decisions, to challenge ourselves and to spark inspiration. My favorite part about ThoughtWorks, ThoughtWorks Y is actually the process by which it was created. This was not a small set of global leaders sitting in a room and coming up with it. We listened to all thought workers globally and worked with thought workers globally to come up with it. So going back to our journey, the social experiment has been successful and lasting long. Our thought leadership continues to get stronger and stronger. How did we protect, preserve, and positively evolve our culture over the past 28 years? Think about it for a second. There was no one person or a set of leaders who were responsible for protecting, preserving, and positively evolving our culture. The answer is we. Collective ownership is what we think did it. And therein lies the key to the question about our future. We, collective ownership. We also think there are some key principles to keep in mind. One, staying true to ThoughtWorks why because that's our frame of reference and it guides us. Two, as new people join the company, creating increased awareness of our culture and reflecting on it, where are we off? You know, where can we do better? Three, we have been resilient as a business through our ups and downs and continuing to be resilient during times of chaos and complexity and improving constantly, that is important. We think those are key, but this is all at a high level. What are some intentional actions we all can take to demonstrate collective ownership? We have some ideas 
and we want to collectively come up with it. And for that, all the thought workers join Patty Mandrino and I at our breakout session on 1029 at the ThoughtWorks Awaiting. I told you at the beginning of this talk, each different type of audience, what can you expect from this talk? Well, how did we do? The feedback link you see, my colleague is putting that on Zoom chat as I speak. It's a simple form and takes less than 60 seconds to complete. Please give feedback because we want to continuously improve. Thank you for giving me your time on a Friday evening. I hope you got something out of it. There are so many thought workers who helped us with this talk. And I want to give a special mention to my two teammates, Patricia, who couldn't be here today. We both are the co-authors for this talk. And there's a reason I kept saying we throughout the talk. And Mithila, our XD friend, and everything that you saw visually was all thanks to her brilliance. Thank you.